and welcome to today's segment of The Power of Money. I'm your host, Michelle Graves, affectionately known throughout the United States of America as the Money Lady for the last 30 years. And for those of you that have been my faithful, faithful viewers over the years, you know I'm committed to bringing you just top-of-the-line information that you cannot get in other venues, particularly today. How do you know what's truth and what's fake? I mean, that's what we're dealing with out here today. But I've been steadfast in the course that I believe God has given me, which is to share with you people, information, things that can help you to improve the quality of your life and your families. So today is no exception. I am going to have on the next two shows a gentleman who is extraordinary. And for those of you that know that I don't cross over much into the realm of religion or any of those things because we don't want offenses, we want information, uh, he's a little bit different. Elder Dennis Hatchett uh, is a man uh, on the move. And when I say that, he has been very, very successful in the marketplace in terms of his philosophy and his teachings on Kingdom Light. So today we're going to be talking about, for this first segment, the mindset of a successful person. What makes people that do well in all circumstances do well? How, how do they stand out? And what are some of the things you can take away from this conversation I'm going to have with him about the mindset? So please, if you're struggling with why you never seem to get ahead, and it's okay to say, I, I just, I don't know what I'm doing, because most people don't. Then you want to sit down, call your friends, your neighbors, your children, and let them know about today's two shows. The first segment begins now. The second one will begin on how to get out of debt. The year's just about concluded. For some of you, when you see this show, the year will be concluded. But the reality is, if you are still trapped in that horrifying experience called debt, what you need to do to come out of it. So without further ado, let me introduce you to my very dear and beloved brother and friend, Dennis Hatchett. How are you? I am wonderful, Michelle. How Good. are you this morning? Oh, I'm great. Yeah, <laughs> Despite yeah. the weather, which has been like yuck, uh, I'm grateful for no snow. So I'm glad to be here. Oh boy, say that again. Yeah, I'm grateful for no snow. Absolutely. I know. Well, it's gla I'm glad to have you in my world. And let's at least begin by you sharing with our many, many viewers uh, who you are and um, what makes you such an expert on mindset. <laughs> well, I am a 36-year uh, UPS employee, and I am the son of a pastor of a pastor of a pastor. My goodness, of generational. A pastor, of a pastor oh, of a pastor of a goodness. pastor of a pastor. For as many ancestors as I know of, they've been pastors. That's amazing. And I was told that you're going to be a pastor. And I told them, <laughs> I said, I don't think so. They said, well, you're, you're, you, you must because you're family. And I've always been that black sheep, the one that didn't fit, the one that mm -hmm. was always different. So um, I fought it. I ran from it. I ducked it. I know you did. I died. Balls going oh, I was, I was, I was doing the, the ollie shuffling. Uh huh. And you know, one day, a little lady came up to me and said, "You know what? You're gonna do what our father said you're gonna do." Wow. And I said, "How did that hit you?" Hey, Whoa. It, it, you know, I, I was coming in the bowling alley and I was running late. Mm hmm And I was like, you know, okay, I, I, I'm going down here to get my stuff. I'll be right back. And I got down to my locker, and it dawned on me what she said. And I'm like, wow, really? And that was about uh, 13 years ago. My goodness. And she took me through a training process that opened my eyes to a whole other world. I'm sure it did. What was the world that, that, that your eyes saw now? The, the world that I saw now is totally contrary to this world we live in because the, the world I saw is, is actually a reality because it's the, the world under the world because mm -hmm. we have the obvious that we see and mm -hmm. then there's something that we don't see which is the process that creates the obvious that we see. And even the obvious that we see 
we may not all be seeing the same thing. Absolutely, absolutely, That's absolutely. That's what I find so amazing. And, and you know the interesting part about that, if you really don't know the origins of the process that created that obvious, you really don't connect with the true essence of what it is in the first place. Woo! Slow down hey. and rewind. Because <laughs> <laughs> you just said some stuff. Well, this world that we see is the obvious. Okay. And in that obvious, inside that obvious, there is a process that created the obvious. Example, you know, you have a guy that's driving down the street and all of a sudden he runs into the back of a parked car. Okay. And he's fumbling for his phone. Okay. So we can say that him fumbling for his phone caused the accident. Okay. But actually it's deeper than that because he was expecting a very important call from a very important person and he made that person more important than his responsibility of driving the car. Okay. So then there's that other world that created a, an event and everybody will just say he wasn't paying attention, he ran into a parked mm -hmm. car. So we do not know what the underlying uh, circumstances were. Absolutely. That created the end result. And that's the other world that my mother exposed me to, the oh. underlying circumstances. Wow. Exactly. And it was, and that's exactly what I've been saying. The because underlying it can, circumstances. The underlying circumstances. That cause people to process what they process. Better known as the root. The root. Yes, ma'am. Mm. Tell me about the root. Well, you know, it's interesting. We talk about roots. And do we really think that the root is the essence of what grows from it? We always look at what grows from it. We're looking at the obvious. We're looking at what we see. Mm -hmm. We're looking at that finished product and we're evaluating this, the finished product. We're mm -hmm. judging the finished product, not having any idea of what its purpose is. And its purpose is locked up in its origin or in its roots. Mm. And if we don't understand the purpose of a thing, Miles Monroe said it best, not knowing the purpose of a thing, abuse is inevitable. Mm. So, and, I, and we hear this bantered about in the communities at large, why am I here? I mean, it's the proverbial question, why am I here? What am I doing here? What am I supposed to accomplish? I'm doing what I think I'm supposed to do, but no one's really ever told me what am I supposed to be doing and why am I here? I mean, come on, people have lived their entire lives from birth to death, go in a box, finish next. Um, <laughs> what does that mean? You know, we're purposed to leave a legacy. We're purposed to leave a legacy. Yes, ma'am. We're supposed Defined to leave. Defined legacy. A legacy is something that somebody could read and understand and get direction from for themselves. Okay. So some, we're, we're purposed to leave a legacy yes, for others. Yes, ma'am. Yes, is there a hierarchy of who gets to the legacy? Well, there's really not a hierarchy as much as it is the individuals that choose to accept the responsibility for change. Hmm. Because you, when you have individuals that are operating in a system, okay, and we always say, if you want to see something different, you might have to do something different right. to get something different. Right. So it's, it's about coming back and saying, okay, well, this is what was done before us. Okay. How can we take what was done before us and grow it into something more spectacular? How can we let this be the root mm -hmm. of something far greater? And you take those roots and you say, okay, well, if we water the roots and we mm -hmm. put soil on the roots, then we give time and something's going to sprout up. And then it, once it starts to sprout, now we nurture it, we continue to water it. And all of those things transcend into the mentality. Our, our mentalities are the same way. Hmm. If you have a thought in mind, it has to be watered. It has to be nurtured. It has to be taken care of. It has to be watched and, and observed. And, and if it's not, then it starts to grow wild. And, and you also observe there will be other things hmm. starting to grow up around it. Weeds. They try to, exactly. Weeds. Absolutely. And you can't get away from analogy. it. So people live their lives in, uh, and I shouldn't generalize, but it does appear uh, that many, many people that I have observed live their lives without any clarity of direction 
and in, and and no intentionality. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and would you talk about that? We've we as a people have lost, and I'm not talking when I say we as a people, I'm not talking about color differences because okay. this is people in general. But we as a people have lost sight of what the objective is for being here on this earth. It does appear that. We have lost the objective. We we have become uh, emotionally influenced and directed mm -hmm. and nothing has purpose anymore because the thing that we do now is, is routine and we get up in the morning and we go to work and we come up from work and we go home, we eat dinner, we go to, we watch TV, we go to bed, we get up and we do it all over again. Mm -hmm. Only right. to be able to do it all over again. Right. And then we live for Friday and Saturday, mm -hmm. the weekend. We live for the, the weekend and what do we do on the weekend? Those things that we couldn't do during, during the week. The week. Mm -hmm. And then we, we continue this cycle. And what is it, what is it affording you? Well, the thing that I find so uh, despairing, and I have to say it because I'll shortly be 65, and I have lived an intentional life, and I, but I find, particularly as I look at my peers and people that I do know, it just seems to be scattered. It just seems to be like, okay, you're doing a lot of things, but what is the end purpose? What are you doing? What, what are you doing here? And um, is that just, again, not having clarity as to what your purpose is? Well, I think it's deeper than that because when you, when you mm -hmm. don't individually know who you are okay. because someone has brought you to the place to know who you are, you never know whose you are. Wow. And if you can't connect with whose you are, you never know who you are because mm -hmm. whose you are created you. And since he created you, your purpose is locked up in him. Not finding him, not finding yourself to find him because you can't find him until you find yourself. We, in, we as a people, we've gotten so caught up in the worldly systems and the, and the, the, the routine of life, mm -hmm. we truly don't know what true living is. We, don't know, that that. we don't know that there's a purpose I beyond that purpose. And we, we, we get sucked in because all of society is doing it. But the, again, the, when, when you look at this and you evaluate it, and let me take a break. For those of you that are just tuning in to this dialogue, I'm talking to Elder Dennis Hatchett, who is a uh, marketplace minister and uh, uh, based in Cincinnati, Ohio, comes from a generational line of pastors and is uh, bringing um, a mindset and a philosophy that we're talking about now that many of you will find uh, surprisingly different, which is why I have him on. I'm not interested in the routine conversation when so many people are blowing themselves up and experiencing pain. And viewers, why can I say that? Because the majority of Americans are on some form of medication for pain, <laughs> whether it's heroin, oh yeah, methamphetamines, uh, pharmaceutical prescriptions, you know the road, but why? Why in a country of people such as us are we all addicted to medications and uh, imbibing medications for pain and suffering? Okay, so we're talking about all of this as a part of my focus on money because you can't talk about money if, if, you're, if your mind is, is off, okay? And so we're dealing with those things right now. Just wanted to bring it current. Continue. Well, let's let's put a label on this mindset. Okay, and, let's and do that. The label to my to, to label the mindset would be to say um, the power of a made up mind. The power of a made up mind. The power of a made up mind. Tell me what that means. Well, you know, I, I'll use this example. When you were a child. Yes. And Mama made some cookies. Okay. And you wanted a cookie. But mama says you can't have a cookie until after dinner. Okay. And when you made up your mind that you was going to get the cookie, you got the cookie. Yes, you did. You might have got the whooping that went along with the cookie, <laughs> <laughs> but you got the cookie. But you got the cookie. The same thing holds true in the day's time. When we make up our minds to do something, we get it done. And the, the thing that's, that's going on now across the country, across the United States, is a... a, a I would like to call it a mindset of complacency. And we're just so complacently locked into our routines, we don't think beyond it. We don't look beyond it. We don't press beyond it. So we're stuck in this, this mode 
and we don't even use that mind for the decision making processes to make up our mind to do to, we make up our mind to what we're going to eat mm -hmm. what show we're going to go see mm -hmm. we don't make up our mind to say okay how am i going to be financially independent here in 10 years right we don't make up our mind to say how do i get out of debt and right. be self-reliant and self-sufficient right right we don't make up our mind to do those kinds of things because those kinds of things require plans. What are plans? Plans are roots. Plans are roots. Plans are roots. That's a point. And okay. if we have no root, we have no plant, we have no plan, uh, what's going to grow? Nothing. Absolutely. And that's exactly what we usually end up with. We come here, we go through this work process, we expire, we get put in the ground, and you're a memory on a piece of paper called an obituary. And end of story. Absolutely. And Absolutely. no legacy. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely that nothing. That is got to be the most, mm, that is so sad. It, it's so sad, but it's so simple. And, and that's what makes it even sadder. It is just so simple mm -hmm. because the thing that I ask people, I said, why don't you take and make up your mind where you want to be? Well, make I think up your mind what you want. asking that question is a provocation for some because that's not a thought that people have given, which is where do I want to be? And, and, and how can I when I'm just trying to get through the day? And I know you hear this, wait a minute, I'm just trying to get through the day. I'm on a job that I'm barely making ends meet. I'm working with people that are nuts. I got supervisors that could care less about my life. And when I leave the job, I'm running out the door. That's what most people say. And it's very true, but we have to also think about it from another perspective. Okay. Let's use this perspective for an example for, for, for just for this, this site. Uh, you have two boys. Okay. And these two boys grew up in a household raised by an alcoholic. Whoa, okay. And one of the boys but grows that's up. that's real. That's, that's real. real. That's, that's real. real. So one of the boys grows up to be an alcoholic. Okay. And the other one never touches the stuff. So then later in life, you, you, you meet these gentlemen and you ask the one that became an alcoholic, well, why did you become an alcoholic? Mm -hmm. He said, because I was raised by one. Whoa. Okay. And then the one that never touched this stuff, you say, well, why did you never touch this stuff? He said, because I was raised by somebody that did. Mm. So the thing is, we have influence okay. coming from all directions. But the question is, how do you process it? And what decisions do you make? Absolutely. What responsibility do you accept right. inside the or do you allow the influence of the environment mm -hmm. to determine where you're going and how you do? Okay. Or do you take dominion over that mm -hmm. and authority over that? And, and that's the power of the made up mind. The power of the made up mind is taking authority over your thoughts, over your decisions, over your future, over your days, how they go, ins and outs. Because the thing that I tell people all the time, nothing ever happens to you that you didn't have control over. Well... You might not understand mm -hmm. how you mm -hmm. had control, but until you start taking control and start sending those influences to do the things that you want them to do, mm -hmm. purpose them to do the things you want them purpose to do, you end up participating in a system that's already established to make them rich, and you keep you poor, and you die. And then you die. And then you die. My God. Accomplishing nothing, leaving nothing, having nothing. Having nothing. Absolutely. And if you don't have a legacy to leave to your kids, a blueprint for your children mm -hmm. to follow, then you failed as far as life is concerned. It, I couldn't, uh, you know what, it's, that's hard truth. It is. It's hard truth. Yes, ma'am. But it is truth because the madness that I have beheld is almost unbearable at times. I literally watch people start out on a path that looks to be a good path, but then they get stuck. They can't go any further. And when I, when I bring it to their attention, when well, you've done so much, finish it. You can't do it. Well, a lot of that is because of the rest of the mindset. Okay. And we have to, to identify the other side of the mindset. We have independency that the world promotes. Okay. There is nothing that independently grows on its own. Nothing. 
So what be are you it plants, saying here? Be it, be it I got, plants, I got be it, it business. Every, everybody has to interconnect. So if we're supposed to interconnect, but we're having a mindset of independence, Dependence. okay, it's the thing that fuels and works against us because now we're beginning to lean on our own understanding, mm -hmm. uh, not understanding that wise counsel right. is, the, is one of the catalysts that waters your seed, <clears throat> that waters your roots. So if you don't have those individuals watering your roots, you go so far because there's so much to do in the business realm. Oh my you God. can't know yeah. it all. You know what? I don't want to sidebar on this, but I had kind of alluded to this yesterday when I shared with you that uh, a, an individual had posted on Facebook a horrific situation they found themselves in. They're very private people, but they're going, they're in the midst of foreclosure and um, paid all this money out to attorneys to try to fight it, not understanding that that was just money wasted trying mm -hmm. to fight a system absolutely you you have to take care of yourself and so they reached out for help which was a positive mm -hmm. and i responded because they were heading to sheriff sale and i tell listen to this listeners this is important um they were heading to sheriff sale and once you get caught up in that system it, it, it's like a machine, yes. boom, boom. And I, I responded, because there were many responses, people going to pray for them, and I'm like, that's great, but that does not resolve your problem. Absolutely. Okay, God's with you. God's going to be with you anyway. Absolutely. Okay, he's a great God. But you're getting ready to be homeless in the winter. That's uh -huh. how that's going to play out. He'll be with you for that too. Absolutely. Uh, but I responded, that they needed to immediately contact a bankruptcy attorney and uh, see if they could file um, immediately to stay the sale, stop the sale. Uh, they could file a 7 or a 13. It would depend upon their situation. I also said I wasn't going to make a referral because I don't do that, but you, you can contact the Bar Association. And I went through an iteration to tell them what to do. And frankly, my advice was dismissed. Absolutely. I, it Absolutely. was dismissed. I was like, uh, do you not understand? So somebody else said, well, you need to do GoFund and raise some money. I'm like, you don't have GoFund time. time. Absolutely. Because this is a machine. And it and, works and, and, and it works like a clock. Yes, And you're caught up in it. And if you don't make a move, you're going to be out here. And somebody else said something else. But there was never an, uh, just a passing acknowledgement that what I was saying may have credibility. And, and I, was, I was really, really at a different point in my life. I may have even been um, annoyed because I'm like, I don't have to, I don't, I'm telling you how to get out of this. Absolutely. And you're now putting me in the same pile as everybody praying for you. But that's the poison of the independent mindset because the poison, oh my God. the poison of the independent mindset tells you that nobody else has your answer. Even when they make the suggestions, even when they tell you what the solution is, your mindset is not going to receive it because Ooh. you're supposed to be the, the corporate thinker here. You're supposed to be the problem solver here. You're supposed to be the one with all the answers. So you don't ever look to anybody for answers because you're always looking to yourself because you are this independent mindset. But why put it out here? Why put your pleadings into the, the social media arena if you did not want an answer? Or am I looking at it from a, a perspective that's narrow? No, no. When the independent mindset becomes frustrated, Oh God! It then, it, then it lashes out and reaches out, but it's it's reaching out out of desperation now. Oh, it's well, you know what? The business world does not respond to that. And no, not no, at all. No, no, not no, at all. No, no, the only no, thing no. they respond to is money. <laughs> <laughs> and they're getting ready to take her house, and she's going to be in the middle of a winter frost, trying to figure out where to move and how to move. And again, as I shared, and I, one person said something and I typed back, please, that's not the answer. Because they said, go to the sheriff's sale and petition the sale. I'm like, you're not going to petition the sale because all they do is take bids. 
Exactly. The sheriff is there, you know, and they're doing an auction and they're taking bids. And you can say, I don't agree with this. And they're going to say next. And what's the next bid? Absolutely. It's a machine. Absolutely. And, and, and it threw me into a place where I just said to myself, what is it? Help me to understand. And so you talk about the independent, the independent mindset. mindset. Mm -hmm. And the poison. And the poison. Because and now the, the desperation because you've blown yourself up. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the thing is, when you get to that point of desperation, there is no rational thought because rational thought's out the window. Rational thought is in the planning process. Uh. But, but there was no plan in place. So we say it all the time. People don't plan to fail. They fail to plan. Exactly. As I learned that early on in my career, people don't. So along with that independent mm -hmm. mindset. This we, is we good. Also, oh, yeah. I mean, this when, is without really taking, good. Without taking in the information, mm -hmm. you, you think the glass is already full. So you're thinking more highly of yourself than you ought. Mm. So then pride comes in. Whew. Talk about pride. Pride won't let you tell the truth. Pride won't let you tell the truth. Pride won't let you. She knew she was in trouble months before it got to that stage. But because pride. Because you don't foreclose automatically. Exactly. It's a process. Absolutely. I mean, but you pride. answer the court. They send you, I mean, from day one when you start getting late notices and progressing on uh -huh. down the food chain. Absolutely. You there got the 30, the 60, the 90. 90. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. But you, pride won't let you say until it's been exposed. Once it's been exposed and people see the foreclosure sign hanging on the door, you can't hide it anymore. So now you're operating out of desperation mm -hmm. because you're trying to still cover it up. And then you want to make excuses mm -hmm. for why it is. And, and then the mindset just escalates into this, this, this dysfunctional process of nowhere. And if, and if you're going nowhere, Oh, Why God. are you striving so hard to get there? You're already there. You've you're already, already arrived. there. <laughs> exactly. If you're going nowhere, oh. you've already arrived. Unpack your bags. Uh, yeah, unpack your bags. And, and, and the thing that I ask people, why do we operate in that survival mentality? Because it's, it's a survival mentality. A survival mentality never plans. It's always, um, and I'll say this because, as you were saying, desperation did click in absolutely because the person went on about how long they'd been in this home and they didn't want to lose their home but they had been tricked into refinancing the home and on and on and I just said this is not a good story I uh, know no no it, but there's this so many not a good, there's it, so many like that though I, I, I got it so many because like you've that. talked about this thing which is why I'm having you on because I wanted my viewers to hear this, that how do you, in her case, GoFundMe is not going to give her the money she needs to no. stay a sheriff's sale. No. The court system, Caesar says, the only way you stay this sale is you got to file bankruptcy and, and, and put a halt. It doesn't mean it's not going to come back, but at least you can halt it to have some time to get the house ready to sell, which it's not going to sell because there's no equity, right? Or give you some time to move. Well, you know the thing. The thing that I look at, as opposed to trying to figure out how to fix a problem, let's eliminate the problem from the beginning. Exactly. If we never get in this position, then we don't have to fix it. Well, you because know what? The system, okay, go the on. System, the system, as you said, is a machine. It's a machine. And, and, and no emotions. It, no. It's a machine. Absolutely. So this machine is operating, and it operates in time, on time. Right. And it does what it does, and it does what it does, despite what you're doing over here. It still does what it does. Right, right. So if you've got a systematic machine over here. That's clock, 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 click, 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 And the click. key word is systematic. If mm. it's systematic and you're not, Whew. you're already a victim. Well, one of the things I said in that post, which you and I have talked about, and viewers, listen to what I'm getting ready to say. It's not your house. No. The, the sad tragedy in America is that you are not a homeowner <laughs> until the home is paid off. Yeah, you still the, don't own and, it. And, and, yeah, and if you don't pay your taxes, they own it. Absolutely. But the conditioning and then the reaction, which is, 
I'm going to lose my home. And I want to, and I did say, I said, one of the things that people don't get is it's not your home Absolutely. until the mortgage lien is satisfied and the bank has no interest. Otherwise, it's their home. Absolutely. You're just and, renting. And you're just renting. Absolutely. And, and the truth of the matter is if you paid your home and you got a 30-year and you paid your home and all that interest all those years and you become delinquent, they can take their property back. And they do. And they do every and day. And resell it to somebody else. And resell else. it to somebody else. Absolutely. Box their money and keep going. Now that's painful. It, it is painful, but the thing that we don't understand and the mindset that we're in is a worldly mindset. And in the worldly mindset, the worldly mindset says ownership. The kingdom mindset is an entirely different mindset. The kingdom mindset, I am a steward. I am the landlord. I am the one that runs it, I govern it, I manage it, I master it, I reproduce it, and I make it multiply. That's okay. what we're here for. We're right. not here for ownership, because if we were here for ownership, our father would have made a way for us to be able to take it with us when we left. You. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And since and he made... Because he's not hooking up hearses to houses exactly. and bank accounts. Absolutely. So if when you're you out, you're nothing, out. So if you brought nothing in this world and you take nothing out, why do we put so much stock about what's in the world? I think it's because people have been um, hoodwinked. Bamboozled. Bamboozled. Ran amok. Ran amok. And they, they, have, allowed, <laughs> they have allowed society okay. to establish their mindset. They've now allowed media to establish, establish their mindset. who they are. Exactly. And then they proceed on to define somebody else's definition to find it as themselves absolutely which is i have no substance meaning worth unless i have stuff. own stuff stuff right i own stuff right and if i don't own stuff then i'm a nobody right you are unsuccessful in this world wow exactly exactly and in the, in the mindset if you're trying to fit in with the Joneses. Mm -hmm. The mindset yeah. already has you in the, the lock. It already has you in the machine. You're already a victim of the machine. It's just a matter of how it's going to chew you up and spit you out. And, and you it, will be chewed up. And spit out. It is inevitable and it is not race specific. No. It, Anybody it, that comes near the teeth is going to get chewed absolutely, up. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and I just, I, w I would that people could get, be get beyond that, that it is not personal. It's not. They don't take but it But you know, I, and I'm going to tell, I've been strictly accused business. of being, yeah, strictly Michelle Graves, the money lady, strictly business. I'm like, you're in this system. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell you something. Absolutely. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm telling you, do not go to the bank crying. They'll give you a tissue and tell you, you need to make plans to move on. Absolutely. Period. Absolutely. Because the house, unless you have the cash. They don't want to hear it. Uh, That's all not, they want to hear is money. You gonna pay us? You gonna get it current? That's all or they want to hear. Or else, are you out? And if you can't bring money, you're out. Anything else you bring is just a performance that they really don't want to see. Period. It that is. is so. You know what? I don't think the average American is aware that this is how matter of fact it is. No, they're not. No, they don't. Because the one particular situation, and I spoke on my Facebook. There's a number of banks in this country that make me sick. And I'm a banker, but they make me sick because the culture is so decimating. But one bank has plundered all of the pension money of the big, big pension funds that they're managing. <laughs> they have plundered these people's money. And the poor little worker, he's putting his money in this account, and he doesn't have a clue that when it's time to collect, he's broke. He's going to be broke. Absolutely. And we commented as bankers. This is outrageous. But the truth of the matter is, we knew it wasn't outrageous. We knew this is how this thing works. Mm -hmm. If you do not handle your business and keep that bank to task, meaning mm -hmm. if you don't perform as we expect, we're going to take it to somebody else. Absolutely. Next. Absolutely. Not even in the next. You didn't do what you said. Write us a check. We're closing out your pension fund management authority and done. 
But again, I think it's because people, well, what do I do? What do I do? And I said, it's a matrix. You are in this thing. Absolutely. And if you're going to play ball with this machine, you better be a good, fast pitcher. Absolutely. I mean, you better be the best. All eyes dotted. All eyes dotted. All T's crossed. So back to this mindset thing, and we talked about independence, where people think that I am a god to myself. Absolutely. And behave and act out these behaviors within their families, in their religious life, in their workplace. And it's, it's a ruse. It's a game. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, along with that, you know, we talked about the pride factor. Right. In, where we can't effectively talk about pride and leave selfishness out. Okay. So pride has to have a hook. Absolutely. And selfishness is the hook that feeds it all. Because it's all about I. It's all about me. It's all but about me. But we're in a it's culture where people take selfies. I mean, that click, click, click. All about I'm me. like, what are you doing? It's all about me. It's I'm all like, about pride. It's all about the glamour and the glitter. It's all about but, the, the prestige. But to me, and I am so serious, I can't even believe this stuff. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm serious. It is, it is better known as the false look of success. The false look. What is a person supposed to conclude when you post a selfie and you look crazy? They don't think they look crazy because they're crazy as normal. <laughs> <laughs> they're crazy as normal. And, it, uh, and the interesting and thing about it, stuff. and the interesting thing about it, and that false picture of uh -huh. success, Oh, God. The same person that's standing in front of this Escalade, taking this picture in front of the Escalade, their, their, their statement of success ain't even got no Escalade. I, I, that's... Ain't got no money, ain't got no car. But they're putting the, the presentation that, hi, I'm successful. And See? then other people respond to that image by feeling elated for them or feeling insecure or feeling inadequate. But it's all... A screensaver. Absolutely. It is nothing. And it's poison that feeds it's poison. the it, it, it feeds the onlookers because now the onlookers are now motivated to try to emulate the same. They're trying to create oh. the same. They're trying to do the same. And that's when the machine starts. Because as soon as a person makes up their mind to become that, now They're you done. start now you start partaking in the credit. You start partaking in the, the checks and you, the check systems and the, the the check cashing stores and oh, all. Oh, God, God. And, and you just keep, the, the motor keeps running because the they're always looking. Keeps running. They're always looking for something to put into the basket as opposed to sitting back and establishing a basket. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the mindset. When, what am I going to establish for myself? Well, for my, I will tell you for myself, uh, the most powerful thing I feel I've ever done outside of raising children honorably is the involvement overseas with uh, these very poor women in this business initiative to create an economic infrastructure because I could see the impact. I could see it mm -hmm. by them being able to do this. Uh, and I was quite content to be completely um, modest. I mean, I, that stuff doesn't mean anything to me anyway. You know that. I don't care. I mean, how many dollars are you going to waste on yourself? Absolutely. The, the self never ends. No, it doesn't. It's never it's, satisfied. It's never satisfied. Never satisfied. Talking point. Did you all hear that? The self is never satisfied. There is never enough. You, it, it's never enough. Never enough. And, and then you look at, well, I want this. Well, I want that. Well, I want this. Well, I want. And I'm like, stop. It never Ends. Because the system always creates something greater. When you get to greatness, what is that? You know what? It, to keep you into the to system. To keep you into the system. To keep you system. locked in the system. Because as long as you stay in the system, you're feeding the system. The system's getting fat off and your you're feeding. Get, and you're skinny. And you're getting even skinnier because the deeper you get in, the more they own you. You know that's so true because uh, one of the things I deal with in terms of retirement. When people have worked for 45 years and they sit down and, and you want to look at what are your options now and they only have maybe $10,000 in the bank, I'm serious. They have their little pension money, they may have Social Security, they're still paying on their house and they got a car. And when I do the math and they said, I don't have any money, what happened? 
And I said, well, you engaged in what's known as money transfer. Ooh. Oh, yeah. You took your money and you moved it over. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, they're fat and you're broke. Absolutely. And, it's, and you watch it repeat itself. I mean, I've been in private practice for 36 years now. And I'm about done. That's why I'm shifting the focus of this show to quality of life issues rather than just money because I recognize that until people change the mindset, yes, they are not ever going to have any money. Absolutely. They won't have the ability to do for their families, their children, their grandchildren, leave legacy to their churches and synagogues and whatever venue. They will have zero. Absolutely. Because the independent mindset lives for today. There today, is no, there there is is no, no plan for tomorrow. Mm -mm, it's for today. What can I maximize today? And what can I have today? What can I do right now? And what can I... But the scripture that's given is, this is the day that the Lord has made. Absolutely. Rejoice and be glad in it. And I said, amen. But the thing that they overlook... Amen. The but thing they overlook is, I have learned in whatsoever state I'm in, therefore to be, be content. content. <laughs> Contentment is not a part of independency. There's no part, there's no, they don't, they're, they're opposites. Because you, you, you take the independent individual that's always pressing forward, that's always making it happen, mm -hmm. that's always doing, that's always doing, he, he's, he's uh, better known as a jack. He's doing everything, but he ain't getting nothing done. And, and the oh, thing, I gotta remember that. She's doing everything. And, and getting, getting nothing, nothing done. done. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and the thing that I ask people, I said, you know what? How long are we going to continue to contribute to a system that's not giving back? As long as you believe that you are entitled to get something back. And they keep you thinking keep you've you got thinking. something coming back and it never shows up. Even at the end, and I have to say this because, again, one of the things that I deal with people about as they move into retirement and then into life issues is so many people, because of their poor health, and which you were raggedy when you were young, so now you really raggedy now that you're old, your eating habits, your lifestyle, no exercise, no anything, and they have to go into a facility because they get sick. And the statistics are that 70% of people are going in that direction. Absolutely. They're going to be in a facility. And if you have any money, it's gone. Absolutely. Call Medicaid. Absolutely. You're not going to be, as I was sharing with an associate, if you have uh, Alzheimer to get a facility, eight to $12,000 a month. Mm -hmm. They say, I don't have that. I said, then you're going to go on Medicaid, which means you get stuck where you get stuck. And anything you had, you had to liquidate. You got including your house. Absolutely. So they this frantic. Oh, I gotta gotta. And then at the end. So you still don't own it. You you don't own it. The trick master. Mm -hmm. The trickster. Absolutely. The trick. I, oh my Absolutely. gosh. And so one woman said to me, and I'll never forget it, because she said, "You mean to tell me that I have been going through this all my life saving, and I'm gonna lose everything?" Mm -hmm. And I said, there is a strong probability mm -hmm. that you're going to lose everything Absolutely. because you didn't take out long-term care because you didn't believe in it. And guess what? It doesn't matter because you don't qualify now anyway. You're too old. Your conditions are too great. And so just enjoy your money because you're going to lose it all anyway. Absolutely. You're going to have to pay for that facility. Absolutely. And they are not interested in any form of payment other than cash. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, government. And, and you know, and, and it's sad. It's it sad is because beyond sad. I, I try to tell people all the time. We talk about the American dream. Uh, th it's, not it's the a American dream. it's the American dream because it makes them rich. Ah. So we dream it, but they actually They're living the reality. They're of living it. the reality. And we're sitting here we're the ones writing the check, and they're the ones cashing it. We're writing wow. the check, and they're cashing it. And we don't recognize the fact that we're just giving our money away. We're just giving it away. Just giving it away. I don't even, you know, I used to feel so badly because I was in an industry where there were very few women and only a small number of, of, of African Americans, and I was both banking and finance and looking at this every day and watching 
how people made this system rich. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, really rich. Absolutely. Bankers are not broke. No. No. <laughs> neither is the stock market. And neither is the stock market. The participants, the, the, the natural participants in the stock market are broke. The <laughs> stock market ain't broke. Because when, when it crashed, it, I, I said, do y'all pay attention mm -hmm. that when the stock market crashed, they were still celebrating and giving out bonuses? And I'm like, why are they giving out bonuses? They're giving out bonuses because they successfully sucked all your money sucked, out of sucked you. Sucked it, sucked it. And they got it all. Right. They got it all. They didn't lose anything. Why? Because you're the one who don't have anything. They still got right. all theirs. And I don't know, as I said, the thing that, that, um, that, and we can talk more about this at another time, because what I want you to do now is to kind of um, give my viewers strategy. Tell, just talk direct to the camera and tell them what they need to do, because we're, we're in a crazy place right now. Yes, no, we, are. we are. Yes, we are. We, we are in a, very are in crazy, a place. crazy, chaotic place right now. And my soul is troubled. I mean troubled because I've not seen moves like this. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And it's only going to get worse. And it's only going to get worse. Absolutely. And I don't want to be negative. But I do tell people, if you do not have an attitude of planning and preparedness, and if you do not tighten up your self-discipline and your self-control, you're going to be out here. Absolutely. You're, you're going to be out here you're gonna be with out no way out. With no way out. With no way out. With no way out. Absolutely. And, and, and I would that the uh, spiritual community would speak to this in a real way because people are absolutely freaked out. They are, and, and rightfully so. Because, you know, the thing that, the thing that I want to share is, is and that all of this is simple. And, well, and none of it, none of it is, none of it is hard. Be transformed by the renewing, renew, redo again, new. Mm -hmm. So let's take all of our thought processes and sit them on the table and say, okay, this is what we've been doing. Now let's do this again, new, because what we've been doing ain't working. And that requires us to pick up the mirror. Oh my God, the dreaded and, mirror. And look in the mirror and stop doing this. And mm -hmm. Stop making excuses. Stop blaming somebody else. Stop expecting somebody else to come save you. Right. It's not going to happen. Right. Sit down and say, okay, now, this is what I've been doing. How can I do this differently and as opposed to paying them all my money? How do I pay me? Mm-hmm. Because if I pay me, then me will always have something to go to when me has a need if I pay me. Simple solutions. You can, you can take an a, a old cider jar. Mm -hmm. You can take a, a three-liter bottle. And you can take the three-liter bottle and put all your pennies in it. Mm -hmm. You can take the cedar jar and put all your coins in it, the, the nickels, dimes, mm -hmm. and quarters. And then you can get a piggy bank and put a dollar in it. Just a dollar. Mm -hmm. Every but time you every time you think about it, and you get a brand new dollar. You take that brand new dollar, and you stick it in the bank. Mm -hmm. Then you take that brand new dollar, and you stick it in the bank. And you take that brand new dollar, and, and you you don't go back to these things. And when they get full, it's like the pennies are full. So you take the pennies mm -hmm. that are full. You empty the jar, turn okay. it into silver, put it in the silver jar. Okay. And then you start the penny jar over. And when the silver jar gets full. full. You cash it in, turn it into green, and put it into the dollar mm -hmm, bank. Mm -hmm. And just that simple thing right there, just that simple thing right there will bring you at the end of the year more money than you even thought you would even, even waste it. Well, I know you're moment. right because most people, one of the things that I teach in my uh, financial survival classes is tracking your spending absolutely because the majority of people spend way too much money on things that they have no recollection or documentation on absolutely and so if they can begin the process of writing down everything they spend because it's a habit mm -hmm. see this is what i find it's a it's a habit spending is an addiction yes, not unlike using drugs it brings you a certain level of satisfaction or else you wouldn't keep doing it. But you know the interesting part about it, when you start these three little jars, yes. these three little jars, mm -hmm. they're your root. 
Oh my goodness. Okay. They are your root. They're your root. And now when you find out how much you have here, mm -hmm. it's the motivation to say, you know what? I need to do this on a grander scale right. because let's say that my penny jar was actually the dollar jar. Mm -hmm. And let's say that the, the coin jar was actually a five, 10 and $20 jar. Okay. So now you're taking it to a whole nother plane. And let's say you say, now let's take it in. Let's have a $5 jar. Let's have a $10 jar. Let's have a $20 jar. Let's have a $50 jar. A $50, and let's have a hundred dollar jar. jar. And you start giving to these different jars and mm -hmm, you start giving mm -hmm. and you, you become consistent in your giving to them. Mm -hmm. Your spending will now shift because now instead right. of giving your money away, you're keeping it for yourself. You're giving it to yourself. That is a principle. Absolutely. When, when, when I learned as a young child, my father taught us many, many financial principles. Um, and as I tell people, um, his financial acumen enabled all his grandchildren to have trust funds. Absolutely. He was not born a rich man, he's a Kentucky man. But because of his attitude about legacy and about money, Absolutely. he was able to fund all of his grandchildren. Absolutely. And, and, and didn't even think it to be a big deal. He worked uh, several jobs and uh, took care of his family and took care of his grandchildren. So I tell people, don't tell me it can't be done because I lived in a home where it was done and where he told us, pay yourself first and do not do debt. Absolutely. Stay away from feeding other people. Absolutely. Feed yourself. Absolutely. And so as a result, uh, I don't think I'm miserly, but I do say that I'm budget focused and I don't do debt. I don't have any debt. And not having debt is, is such oh a peaceful God. thing. Oh my God, is it, it not is, it is liberal? It's such a peaceful thing. Listeners, our time is wrapping up on this particular segment on mindset with Dennis Hatchett, who is a, um, an apostle by commissioning, and um, he'll be carrying on this conversation in the second segment where we talk about what happens when you're strangling in debt. Ooh. 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 I, look. That'll make you crazy. <laughs> will it? Yes, it yes, will. Yes, it will. Yes, so it will. I appreciate you listening in on today's segment of The Power of Money. And as we move into the holiday season, I send you great blessings and comfort and joy, not in material things, but the joy that comes from you being able to actively participate in this experience called life. And we want you to participate fully aware of the benefits that come from your awareness. So thank you so much for being a part. God bless you. I love you. And I send you joy. You take care. Bye-bye.